Hey, Okay, so here we are. God, thank you so much for this morning. Um, thank you for our children that we have. Uh, there's a lot of them, and we're grateful for every one of them. Uh, we ask that they would come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ even through this exercise, and that we all would be blessed in the display of Jesus uh, that goes on this morning. So, Jesus, we are just going to honor your presence among us and ask that you uh, just keep showing yourself to us and how amazing you are and how much we do desire you. And so, God, we just bless this whole time in your name. In the years after 538 BC, the Jews resettled into their lost homeland by means of the Edict of Cyrus, the Persian king of the known world. Their spirit was broken, their wealth was robbed, and their independence was lost. As the years of foreign control carried on, the Jews spent plenty of time searching the writings of the prophets and of Moses. As they searched the scriptures, they noticed a common thread. A thread they had not noticed before. A thread of hope in what seemed to be the promise of a special person. Since their parents had abandoned the covenant with God, no one had paid any attention to the prophets and the writings of Moses. But now all they had left 
it was time to read, and they were committed to obeying God's covenant. And what of these predictions? Had they been fulfilled? No? Who could this person be?
greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, since I am not yet married? The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's hand, and may my word to you be fulfilled. Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child.
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and, it, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, and laying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word, 
concerning what had been t told them about this child. <laughs> and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up and all these things and pondered them in her heart. Okay, I have a very important question for the kids who were just up here. So, when we watched the video, Emmanuel was the name that they called <coughs> Jesus before he was called Jesus. They called him Emmanuel. Did anybody catch what Emmanuel meant? <coughs> God with us. God with us. Now, here's the very important question. Shepherds, who are the shepherds? Raise your hand if you're a shepherd. Okay, good job, shepherds. Now, you shepherds in this play, you came and visited the baby Jesus. That was awesome. And then, after you visited the baby Jesus, you would have gone back to where? Probably your sheep. <laughs> you would have gone back to your sheep. So for a moment, you were with the baby Jesus, but then after you left the baby Jesus, you weren't really with him anymore. Was he with you if you were with your sheep? Not really. Kind of a trick question I'm building. <laughs> Angels, and we'll get you to answer this question. There were wise men, weren't there? We didn't represent any wise men. <laughs> but there were wise men that visited Jesus, weren't there? They came and they visited Jesus and they gave him like gifts of gold and, and, and different fragrances. And they visited and they saw him. And then after they visited him and they were with him, where did they go? The wise men. Anybody want to help the kids? Just say. After they visited Jesus, where did the wise men go? That's what I was asking. Yep. <laughs> they went back home. So were they with Jesus? Was Jesus with them after they went back home? Because he was still in the manger, wasn't he? So here we have... Um, the shepherds and the wise men, they came, they saw Jesus, and then they left. And they weren't with Jesus anymore. But Emmanuel was the name that God gave to Jesus, which was God with us. So, we got to solve this somehow. And you even, you think about it, here's, here's Mary and Joseph. Oh, look, it's Jesus. He's sleeping. He's not really with it. <laughs> He's not really with me. I mean, he's sleeping. We're not talking. We're not playing. We're not, he's just kind of here. I guess we're together. But we're not really... This is supposed to be God with us. This is supposed to be the culmination of God being with man. And we're just watching a guy sleep. You know, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm pointing out here, right? If we're going to have God with us, we're going to have to really be with him. Or... If I have someone and I'm talking with them, 
And I'm talking, and we're having a great conversation, and we're just, we're agreeing about how something really important needs to happen in the world, or, and we're talking, we're with each other, right? But really, that's as close as I can be with a person, is to just engage in, like, dialogue and conversation, and everything, like, they can't get much more with a person than that. But here's God, this is Emmanuel, this is going to be God with us. And so, Jesus actually told us the solution to this situation. We know that Jesus' name was God with us, and at the end of Luke, Luke 24, Jesus has died, and then he's been resurrected again. And this is what he says, I'm going to go to heaven, and I'm going to send the promise of the Father to you. Well, I thought God's promise was that he was going to be with us. I promise I'll be with you. So Jesus comes, but then Jesus says, I'm going to send the promise of the Father to you. And what does he send 50 days later? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And do you know what Peter says in Acts 2 about the Holy Spirit? He says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you will receive the promise. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. Now i got a question. Can you be inside of anybody else's mind, even if they're your spouse? Can you be inside their mind? No. Troy, have you ever been inside of anybody else's brain? <laughs> if he said yes, I was going to ask questions. <laughs> There's just no way to be closer than like sticking your heads side by side, right? And even then you're not really sharing thoughts. But that's what Jesus was doing. When Jesus came, he came to be God with us, but then he left to give an even better promise, which was the real promise. Is if you want to have God with you, and God wants to be with you, the best way to be with is to be inside of your spirit with you inside of your mind with you, inside your emotions with you, inside of your thinking with you. The ultimate promise that God gave for God with us was when God moved inside of us through the work of that crazy little baby who grew up and gave it all for us so that we can have the true gift of the Father, which is Emmanuel, God with us. So we're going to light a candle here and... In the spirit of Christmas and Advent, we know that he came to destroy the seed, or destroy the seed of, of the snake, and we know that Jesus came to be the king of the world, and now we know that he came to give us the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Spirit to be with us, inside of us is the true gift of God to mankind. <clears throat> Amen. 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 So let's sing a song on this.
kids to stand up. Stand, stand, stand. Because the real spirit of Christmas involves something. And how is it spelled? Don't you spell it like this? How do you spell it? Isn't it spelled J to the O to the Y?
And sometimes you stay at church a long time, and sometimes you get done early. <laughs> so that's all that we have prepared for this morning. Are there any birthdays that Where is you it? should... Just one minute, Matt. Yeah. Happy birthdays, anniversaries. I think it's Nancy's birthday today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday.